<laughs> yeah. My first question. Yeah. Yeah. Still asleep. I mean, oh wait. Do a really quick Q and A. I'm filming this for YouTube, as you're aware. Um, so I just want to make it clear. The video that we've just made it through a <laughs> midnight <laughs> stream. <laughs> uh, the hard cuts of my And it, we've, oh, we've come oh. to realise that we're all far too old to watch a drama. <laughs> Anything at all, if by all accounts you'll answer anything. <laughs> so, yes. yeah, please, love through results. Uh, <laughs> what do you remember filming that wasn't in this theatrical part? I've told me that everything that I filmed ends up in the film. Okay. I was really proud of the fact that everything okay. that I filmed personally ended up in it. So. Apart from there was one scene um, in the, um, uh, like the, the council, which we reshot the whole scene because the set was all lasers originally, and they, that was one of the first things we shot. And they didn't like it because it was a long, so we, we reshot the whole scene a few months and a half later. Excellent. So all your parts exist? Everything is in there. As far as I know, everything's in there. And, but uh, I know from uh, Bob King and the guys at Image Animation, there was 200 monsters. Over 200 I was monsters say that they created. It's the, the most, it's the most racist in any film. But you don't see them. No, what you do, you see some of them. You some little snippets. Some of them you just see seconds. I know. It's crazy. It's a great ending to the monster score yeah. that you're showing the film. <laughs> it's got the most monsters. Red or green monsters. You can show it. Correct. <laughs> Not shown. Yeah. So, will that end up in the vault? Oh, or the definitive cut? I don't know. I don't know how much. I hope it does. I know that the special effects people were working their asses off mm -hmm. every day trying to come up with something different. You can see it, you can obviously yeah. see it. Some of them were in it actually, I know. A few of them actually were in it. Have you seen the Cabal first of all? No, first I saw saw a rough cut a couple of years ago in the States. Yeah. Um, I've never seen a rough cut before. I don't know how rough a rough cut would look like. <laughs> it was rough. Um, but this evidently is. Um, I've, I mean, I've seen Library before, and watch it again. I don't know if it was quite sleepy, but it, it felt <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it felt incoherent. It felt like it was t it was yeah. just mainly in the edit that it was cut so quickly mm, that you're much. just kind of thrown along. You think, okay, well, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened, and sometimes it's not explained, is it? Sometimes yeah. it's not. Yeah. Whereas compared to yeah. like Hellraiser, where things do move along their own so pace, clear. Yeah, things. The script is it. incredibly clear what's happening, and it's, yeah. I think, I, watching that, I thought one of the things that's missing is there's an, an emotional attachment. You're yeah. not sure who you're supposed to be attached to, yeah. um, and especially in the, in the end scenes, there's kind of, the cops are being killed, everybody's being killed, and you're not quite sure who's being killed at the same time. Yes, yeah, that's it. The thing is, there's a there's kind of beauty in kind of keeping, letting things just take their time and evolve a bit more, trying yeah. to get a breathing space in the characters that you're kind of not given here. I think Pelican's probably the one that gets the most character development in a way. Yeah. Even, <laughs> even though <some> people, <laughs> even though Moonface is the most one, one of the more distinct looking ones and some others are very distinct, but I think Pelican's the only one where you actually see any kind of emotional side to it. Yeah. And then your character itself. Did so we actually feel anything or kind of uh, understand what it's like is when they're dying? Yeah, and uh, I think it, it's all credit to you that you actually feel. I think the little girl as well, I mean, it kind of starts to show it. I, I mean, yeah. there's a few little bits where obviously it was supposed to be developed that you felt the characters or yeah. the creatures more than the, than the humans, but uh, yeah. well, it wasn't allowed. I love the Wells Bird as well. I'm trying to think. Yeah. The, yeah. He's the boss in the picture. Obviously. Yeah, you feel more when you're lost when he's gone. I think there is there is elements of it there that but you can't right. Maybe yeah, yeah the there's, there's something that makes the cabal feel quite exciting that you can be a companion for. But something watching that actually, it's a very big film. I haven't it's 
thing is obviously suffering, and it's, it's obvious when there's something there behind. Because, mm-hmm. like, with the, like, the films I've seen, with the films that I've seen, combining with the two things, the songs that are bad, mm-hmm. and maybe for me, it's sort of that, maybe boring, but the songs that are kind of, you know, you can tell the thing that's kind of hidden behind everything, and I think that is one of them, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I agree, I agree. I mean, when we're, obviously, when we uh, curate the films, someone could probably take it in turns. I think we start off with showing films that are questionable quality and taste, is what we would call it. That evolves it's into a few of those. Actually, there are a few of those on the trailer, I thought. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they were perfect. They were brilliant. They were fantastic. <laughs> but uh, what we evolved into is just obviously showing films that are of a certain nature that you probably were either not recognised or they were just fallen short of being something that could be huge. Yeah. And I think that's exactly what Night Breeze is. It just fell short from being it something did. really major. Yeah. Um, and that, that's why, uh, obviously, to commemorate the, the Monster Store closing, uh, and kind of closing up the book for now, so Monster Kingdom can continue, was just that Night Breeze would be a film that obviously relates to Hellraiser, made a, a huge impact in your life. Oh, massively, yeah. It's no, that, the analogy there is that hopefully Hellraiser, uh, uh, Night Breeze will go on in a different format, and so will the Monster Store. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was just a, a perfect film to, to use <laughs> because of it's, uh, you know, it's a film that we really represent, but also something very close to Monster Kingdom as well. So. Oh, yeah. Claudia. I've got one more. Um, how do you define the occupied medium thing? Because obviously yeah. we see a lot of what's yeah. happening. Exactly. So we have to move that. Four weeks into Occupy Midian. And it's already got 7,000. <laughs> 7, yeah, 7, 2,500 2, and something. Wow. But 500 extra gone on this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yes, it's, it's getting momentum, growing momentum all this time. The, the, the aim of the 5,000 is something that has to be yeah. used. For anyone that doesn't know, there's actually 45, I think it's 45 minutes more of Mike Reed that's yes. cut out. And Mike Reed's never been released in this country on DVD. No. Apparently you can get a German or a <laughs> Swedish region too, <laughs> somehow. Um, I don't know what language. American no, region. American no, region one. Um, so basically it's campaigned on. Yeah, it's, it's a, a campaign to get the, the, the proper yeah, director to cut, which is campaign. a very different film. And yeah. even one, of the, uh, obviously yourself and a few of the cast members are behind it as well, aren't they? So yeah, and Bobby is... Uh, yeah, yeah he's up there, and yourself, and there. Clive Barker's even behind as yeah, well, isn't he? So I remember the 45 minutes I was bored and just became used to these people. So, just kind of insert some sighing. It'll be okay. I really feel like character is going, oh, they've been killed. It might just be the executive, like, was 12 murders that Dexter It's just long, lots of murders. Oh. Question that I'm intrigued. Did you ever meet the people David that Cronenberg? They yes, I did. He was absolute yeah. gentleman. Yeah. He was very, very sweet, and he was um, just in the process of casting Naked Lunch at the time. <laughs> so we were all trying to persuade him that we could play um, approach typewriters, <laughs> <laughs> and none of us succeeded. Yeah. He didn't cast any of us, but no, he was lovely, and his family was around. His, his kids, his girls were there, and his wife, and he was really very nice chap. Great. And we were all huge and huge in awe of him. Oh yeah, yeah. I think so. I'm just I was wondering whether when you were discussing them and you were looking at you were trying to find some sort of growth defects that you know, can I put them on? I'm a big fan. So it, it seemed when I first watched him sort of appearing it, I was like, oh, it's David Cronenberg. Uh-huh. Very interesting. We never see him actually anything. No, exactly. He appears in a few things, doesn't he? He appears in cameos, but nothing like that. No, nothing like a, a main role. And I haven't seen him in anything before. I've been a great fan of his work mm-hmm. um, before then. Well, thank you very much for coming. And thank everybody for coming. I mean, there's a lot of people that have fallen out because they've either fallen asleep or <laughs> behind the curtain. I am very appreciative of everyone thank who you. came. Very appreciative of Simon. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Hopefully, we'll do this again soon. So, <laughs>